Hi movie fans, great to have you back. In this episode, I will synopsize Top Gun Maverick. So buckle your seatbelts, put up your trade tables, and get ready for takeoff. Stay to the end for our conclusion. In the opening sequence, we learn that this movie has something to do with naval aviation. It's all go and life on an aircraft carrier it looks fun. Where do I sign up? In an aircraft hangar, in the Mojave Desert, we see a man working on off P-51 Mustang. Above his wash basin, he has some pictures, mostly of mustached military types and a couple of kids, and what looks like a kind of shrine. As he gets dressed, his calendar reminds him that today it is Mach 9. He has a plaque saying Captain Pete Maverick Mitchell, test pilot. Well, that mystery is over. We know who he is now. He grabs his aviators and Kawasaki Ninja and leaves. Maverick rides his ninja through the desert to a restricted base, where he rides up to a hangar and drives in. He pulls up alongside a super duper looking skunkworks type aircraft. As he cheerfully approaches the group waiting for him, he is told they are scrapping the program for not hitting Mach 10. Admiral Kane is trying to appropriate the budget for his drone program and is coming to shut them down personally. Maverick is not having that and says, they want Mach 10, let's give them Mach 10. The pointy thing gets in position while Maverick gets ready and suited up. He is told the threshold is Mach 10 not above. Maverick gets in his aircraft and is preparing to taxi. It's all getting very exciting. The plane is called Dark Star and has billions of dollars worth of cool looking lights. The engines start up and Maverick taxis out to the end of the runway. Just as he gets permission to take off, a SUV pulls up at the main gate of the base. Turns out it is Rear Admiral Kane to shut down the program, and he looks constipated, angry, or something. The control room tells Maverick about Kane and what will happen to him if he goes ahead, but he's more worried about the team's jobs, so decides to go ahead anyway. As he takes off over Kane, he causes massive amounts of damage to the guardhouse and could have quite easily injured the sentries. But never mind that, he is accelerating into the sky. Kane bursts into the control room and asks what's going on. Maverick plays out like his comms unit is on the fritz. Surprisingly, the Admiral believes the controller when he says it's something to do with the curvature of the Earth. Oh no you didn't. Flat Earthers be going mad now. Anyway, Maverick is going faster and faster and faster and faster, eventually hitting Mach 10. The control room erupts in celebration. But it's not enough for Maverick and he pushes it further until he breaks the thing and it is seen disintegrating in the skies over who knows what state. Maverick, unsurprisingly, survives the crash and makes his way to Cecil's Cafe, a local diner where he quaffs a glass of water and surprises the Ellibuds getting their breakfasts. When he arrives back at base, he is met by military police and taken to Kane. Kane reads him his service record and asks him why he is stuck as a captain. Maverick says that's where he belongs. Kane goes on to tell him that the future of air combat will be unmanned aircraft and he will become obsolete. He tells him to pack up his shit and he's got one hour to get off the base and move to North Island. Kane can't believe it himself, but a call has come through for Maverick to go back to Top Gun. You'd better believe it, Mav is back. Cruising his bike up and down the runway, like old times. As he walks into the HQ, he can see a picture of himself and Iceman on the wall from an earlier time. On the other wall, there is another picture of Iceman, and he is now an admiral in charge of the Pacific Fleet. That's impressive. Way to go, Iceman. Maverick meets Admiral Bo Cyclone Simpson and Rear Admiral Solomon Warlock Bates, who brief him on why he has been called back to Top Gun. Apparently, there is an unsanctioned Iranian enrichment plant. Sorry, uranium enrichment plant. And the Pentagon want to blow it up. The plant is heavily defended with surface-to-air missiles, fifth-generation fighter jets, surplus planes, and it is in an incredibly inconvenient crater at the end of a valley. Maverick assesses the requirements of the mission and suggests precision strikes with F-18s, adding that someone is likely to die on the mission. The brass tell him they don't want him flying, but want him to train a group of 12 Top Gun graduates and pick six of them for the mission. One of the graduates is a mustached pilot, whose picture was on his shrine-like wall back in his personal hangar. Bradley Bradshaw aka Rooster. Maverick used to fly with his father Goose, up until he did a reckless maneuver and got him killed, but somehow he was cleared of any wrongdoing for that. The dickish admiral wonders what Rooster is going to think about the whole situation. It is not like the Navy has any other pilots to choose from, so let's put these two together for the incredibly dangerous mission. What could go wrong? Maverick goes to the local watering hole to drown his sorrows. He gets a text from Iceman, who turns out to be a really fast texter for a boomer, like really fast. And would you know it, Maverick knows the lady who bought that bar three years ago. They have been intimate in the past, and she says that it always ends the same way, so let's not even start this time. He says okay, and that she looks good. 
she rings the bell for him to buy the bar around some of the best of the best pilots are out on the booze the night before the secret mission briefing lucky they are the best there is a bit of dick swinging going on before bradley bradshaw shows up maverick tries to keep a low profile there is a bit more bravado going on amongst the pilots and hangman states that he will be team leader rooster suggests that hangman is going to get someone killed Hangman makes the point of telling Rooster he is too hesitant. Maverick's card gets declined, and when he does not have enough cash to pay the bill, Penny has him thrown out of the bar. The Top Gun pilots oblige. At the first briefing, the team are introduced to Maverick. Some of the team remember throwing him out of the bar, but Rooster looks like he has got an egg stuck in his ass. Maverick throws the F-18 operations book in the trash can, saying we know the limits of the aircraft. We're here to find your limits. Show me what you're made of. They are in the air and Maverick is laying out the rules. Machine guns only, 5,000 foot hard deck, two of them versus Maverick. Payback and Fanboy are flying together and Rooster is flying solo as their wingman. Payback suggests whoever gets shot down first does 200 push-ups. Maverick agrees and blasts past them, soon getting Payback in his sights. Rooster gets between them and draws Maverick off target, but he soon goes below the hard deck and then gets shot. Back at base, Rooster starts his 200 push-ups. Some of the other pilots rip on Rooster and take a selfie. Both of their planes are taken out and they're back on the tarmac doing push-ups themselves and no longer laughing about it. Next up is Phoenix and Bob and their wingman Hangman, who will leave them out to hang, according to Phoenix. It's not long before Hangman leaves them out to dry and they are gunned down. Soon Hangman is on Maverick's tail, but Maverick heads into the sun and Hangman is flying blind. Moments later Maverick is on him and gets the kill. Now all three of them are on the tarmac doing push-ups. Maverick takes out the final students one by one. It's been a good day for push-ups. Hangman and Rooster are paired up this time. Hangman asks what's the deal with him and Maverick. Rooster says it's none of his business. Maverick shows up all of a sudden and flies upside down above him. They then go into a spiral dive together, playing a game of chicken, until below the hard deck, which is the equivalent of crashing. They pull up. Just a moment before crashing into the really, really hard deck. Rooster is on his tail, but hesitates from taking a shot. Maverick does his patented put on the brakes trick and gets behind Rooster and takes the kill, then sends him packing for his push-ups. Payback has got a lot to answer for for suggesting push-ups for every kill. A bit of payback perhaps. But aside from that, what's Hondo even doing here? He was at the secret test site that's still active. Does he just follow Maverick from assignment to assignment? Sorry, never mind, forget that. Back to the story. Hondo says he can stop doing push-ups, but Rooster keeps going. Phoenix comes and tells him not to get kicked out, and Rooster tells her that Maverick set him back for years by pulling his papers from the academy. She asks, Why would he do that? Maverick is in for another reaming, this time for violating the hard deck. He is told that he has three weeks to teach them to strike the target. Maverick makes a point of noting that he is training them to come home. The Admiral says they know and accept the risks. Maverick says, I don't. Sir. Admiral Simpson says he needs all training ops in writing and nothing will change. Maverick then gives him a written request to lower the hard deck to train for the mission. Simpson quietly simmers. Coyote and Hangman look at a picture on the classroom wall and realize that Rooster is the son of Maverick's Rio. Maverick makes his way back to the bar. To pay off his bill, he meets Amelia again, who is a bit prickly. She remarks that he is still a captain. Maverick volunteers to help Penny sail her boat to the yard when Amelia says she can't go. They have a fun time bonding while sailing. Mav gives Penny a ride home. Once they say their goodbyes and Penny closes the door, she swoons on the other side. In the next briefing, Mav tells them the two, two playing teams have three minutes to get in through a valley at 100 feet altitude and going 660 knots to hit the target and bug out before the fifth gen fighters will be after them. Time is of the essence. They start training on a simulated course. One by one, the pilots fail to get there on time. Some get hit by missiles and some crash. Hangman leaves his wingman and flippantly says he could not keep up. Rooster is leading his team but is going too slow to make it in time. Mav asks him, Why are you dead? Hangman starts having a go at Rooster and tells him to stop dwelling on the past. He then goes on to tell everyone about Rooster and Maverick's connection bringing up that Mav was flying when Goose died. This goes down like a lead balloon and Rooster jumps up to attack Hangman. Iceman orders Maverick to come and see him. Maverick shows up and gives Mrs. Iceman a big hug. She tells Mav that Iceman's cancer is back and it is terminal. Iceman is at his desk, coughing and spluttering. Iceman types messages to Mav due to his throat cancer. Mav explains the situ with Rooster and tells Iceman to send him on the mission instead. Iceman tells him that he is needed, then they hug it out. 
Maverick gets the team members playing beach games right outside of Penny's bar to teach them to play as a team, and so he has an excuse to see Penny again. Maverick takes the opportunity to give Penny a ride home and give her another ride when they get home. Score. During their pillow talk, Mav says that he blocked Rooster's application because Rooster's mother made him promise to before she died after he killed Goose by unnecessarily flying into Iceman's jet wash. They are interrupted by Amelia, so Maverick jumps out of the window and gets caught. Amelia tells Maverick not to break her heart again. At the next briefing, Rear Admiral Bates tells them the mission has been brought forward one week. They have to move to the next phase despite no one passing the first. Maverick tells them what they have to do to get on target. Two pairs flying inverted over the crater lip, then a steep dive hitting two lasered guided missiles into a three meter ventilation hatch, a bit like Star Wars. To get out is a very steep climb that will be hitting nine Gs. It will probably bend the plane. Then, at their slowest, they will fly straight into enemy radar and get fired at. They go on another training mission, but the team fails to hit the target. Coyote blacks out and almost crashes his plane, but Maverick is able to lock on him and the alarm helps Coyote regain consciousness. On the way back to base, Phoenix and Bob's plane hits some birds and has engine problems, with both engines flaming out and the plane ditching. Phoenix and Bob manage to eject in time, but the plane explodes when it crashes into a mountain. Iceman has died, his funeral is held almost immediately, and all the Top Gun students are invited and get front row seats, despite not knowing Iceman. Maverick sheds a tear for his old buddy. Admiral Simpson tells Maverick that he is being grounded permanently and that the Admiral is taking over the training. Maverick goes to see Penny and tells her that he is out. She gives a fighter pilot based story about how he needs to keep fighting and those are his trainees. Admiral Simpson tells the trainees the new time on target is 4 minutes and that they will not have to fly as fast. The trainees are confused at this, worried about the surface to air missiles and the 5th generation fighters. They suddenly see a plane preparing to fly the course, it is Maverick and he is going to show them how it's done. He sets the time to 2 minutes and 15 seconds and off he goes. After a few minutes of balls to the wall flying, he drops his bombs on target and completes the mission on time. The students are impressed. I am impressed. Maverick is up in front of the Admiral again. After a little moaning, the Admiral makes Maverick team leader for the mission. Before Maverick is shipped out, he goes to visit Penny at the bar and say his farewells. Maverick is now on an aircraft carrier and is trying to speak to Goose. Rear Admiral Bates tells him this is where he belongs. Maverick picks the teams for the mission, Plane 1, Payback and Fanboy, Plane 2, Phoenix and Bob, with himself and Rooster as wingmen. Hangman looks disappointed. It's the big day. All the pilots are going over their aircraft and preparing to take off. Maverick is soon in the air and the others shortly join him. The team moves into position below radar. Maverick calls in the Tomahawk attack on the airbase. They move their planes into attack formation and start their countdown timers. It's on now. They make their way to the target with great skill. The SAM sites are visible on the mountains. The AWACS spots two fifth generation fighters on patrol, but they are heading in the opposite direction. Rooster has started slowing down a bit, just as the Tomahawks are about to hit the air base. Kablooey! The Tomahawks hit the runway making a huge mess. The fifth generation fighters change direction to see what's going on. Both teams continue on their run to the target. Rooster is falling behind and in danger of being spotted by the fifth gens. Rooster starts trying to talk to his dead father. That's all it took. He has accelerated and is back on schedule. Amazing stuff. Maverick, Phoenix, and Bob make their way up the mountain into the inverted dive over the lip. Bob targets the ventilation shaft and Maverick drops his bombs perfectly. They start to climb out of the crater. As Goose, Payback, and Fanboy make their way over the lip, Fanboy's laser system stops working. Rooster has to use the force to drop the bomb on target. He drops the bombs perfectly on target and they start their climb also. Yoda would be so proud. They all make it out of the crater and are immediately fired upon by the surface-to-air missiles. This is extremely tense, but they manage to avoid all of the missiles. Rooster has two missiles on his tail and has run out of chafe. It looks like he's about to get hit, but Maverick put on the brakes and fires his chafe which stops the missiles from hitting Rooster. One hits Maverick's plane though, which causes it to go down in the mountains. Admiral Simpson orders the team to get back to the aircraft carrier and not engage the enemy fighters. Rooster is having a hard time processing this. Maverick comes to laying in the snow. He hears a helicopter in the distance, and he sees an attack helicopter coming for him. The helicopter shoots at him as he runs for cover, and then maneuvers around to shoot at him. 
Just as it's about to shoot him, the helicopter blows up. Rooster shot the helicopter, but now a surface-to-air missile is fired and hits Rooster's plane, which he ejects from. Maverick sees Rooster's parachute and runs towards him. They meet up and devise a plan to steal an F-14 from the airbase that was attacked earlier and fly it back to the carrier. They easily make their way into a hangar and start up one of the F-14s. Rooster jumps into his old man's position as Mavs are I.O. They are soon airborne, but not after losing the front wheel assembly. The aircraft carrier recognizes that Rooster is airborne in an F-14. As they are escaping, the two fifth-generation fighters approach them not knowing that they are the enemy. The enemy wingman moves into position to fire upon our boys. Maverick suddenly maneuvers, firing his guns at the lead enemy aircraft, taking it out of the equation. The remaining enemy craft fires missiles at Maverick, which they manage to avoid with chafe. Maverick pulls a brilliant maneuver and flies in behind the enemy plane, but the enemy avoids his missile with an equally impressive maneuver. The new plan is to fly low and fast so the enemy can't lock on. The enemy plane switches to guns and gives them a scratch or two. Maverick puts on the brakes and lets him fly right by, firing a missile that gets chafed out. Switching to machine guns, Maverick takes out the 5th gen fighter before running out of rounds. They head out to sea, back to the aircraft carrier, with no ammunition and no missiles. Another 5th gen fighter is onto them and it's looking bad. Maverick's only option is to get some altitude and eject but Rooster's ejector seat is not working. Just as all is lost, Hangman comes from nowhere and destroys the fifth gen. They all have a bit of a giggle and go home. Maverick manages to land his plane on the aircraft carrier with no front wheel. Everyone is out on deck to celebrate and a great time was had by all, except Admiral Simpson, who was unable to crack a smile. And that is it for this installment of Movie Synopsis. I hope that you enjoyed this synopsis. This Top Gun movie is a great watch and highly recommended by us, especially on the big screen. The practical effects are out of this world and it is a roller coaster of a ride. Let us know what you thought in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe for more movie synopses. Take care.